Hello people and we're back with another Patreon request. Today's tactic is a 433, Xavi's 433. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a mini analysis, um, recreate a tactic, sorry, play the game and then lastly look at the results. So if you are enjoying my type of content, make sure you are subscribed, you can like the video, leave a comment, all of that is going to help with the algorithm, help the channel, help the video. Also you can find me on Twitch where I stream, today will be the FM streamer showdown as well, which I'm in involved with <laughs> so i'm so excited can't wait but for now let's get stuck in to this video So before we get stuck in recreating the game and playing that Champions League final first, we're going to have a mini analysis. This is going to help us later on when we are recreating that tactic. So let's start with that analysis. Xavi wants his side to build out from the back, splitting the centre backs, creating width and depth with the players positioning on the field. The Spanners 4-3-3 system allows them to execute this perfectly, given the players at his disposal, although Xavi hasn't been a stranger to playing a 4-2-3-1 on the odd occasion. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who has been starting as Xavi's lone striker in the 4-3-3 has been an option for direct balls from the build-up phase. While the former Arsenal man does make runs in behind, he's also very adept at dropping short to receive the ball to feet. Using Aubameyang in deeper positions has been a way for Xavi to break down high defensive by creating third man runs. These glorious passing patterns are a key component to the young coach philosophy and Xavi has infamously spoke about their importance in the past, saying the third man is impossible to defend against. Essentially, when Aubameyang drops, players support him with runs in behind and movements in front so that he can lay off the ball off to the third man. From there, Barca can generally find the fourth man who is running in behind. Third and fourth man runs are a wonderful way to break down a defensive block. Irrespective of how deep the opposition are starting and Xavi's side are extremely drilled at doing so. Also, whilst in possession, when Jordi Alba push higher, the left side essential midfielder could drop from the midfield as a wide centre back, making it a temporary back three for Barcelona. It was useful against Atletico because the opponents would first commit the eight, Thomas Lamar, to press Ronald Arujo and then pressing Gerard Piquet when the centre back received a lateral pass from the partner. Hence, the Young's presence in the first line could make it a 3 versus 2 for the ball progression in the half spaces, as shown in the image. Defensively, and as with building up from the back, Xavi wants his side to subscribe to another element of modern football through pressing high up the pitch. Most sides commit multiple bodies in the press, but Xavi has taken his side's tactical setup in the phase to near Bielsa levels. With pressing, the reward is mouth-watering, while the risk is quite worrisome. Coaches have found ways to ensure that the team are balanced in the press so that the backline isn't overly exposed should the first wave of pressure get broken. Usually, one of the midfielders will sit back and play zonally to protect the back line from any direct balls pumped over the press. Nevertheless, Xavi has taken inspiration from another of his former mentors, Luis Enrique. Here's an example of Spain's pressing under Enrique in a 6-0 fashion of Germany back in 2020. The press is man-orientated and extremely rigid. The most striking aspect of Enrique's press with Spain is that no player is kept back to protect the back line in case the press is broken or the opponent goes long over it. And that wraps up the mini analysis, which was written by Adam Scully over at Total Football Analysis. The link will be down below in the description. But now let's head over into Football Manager and let's recreate that tactic. Before we continue with this wonderful tactic, this video is sponsored by the wonderful app Spitch. It's brand new on the market, so make sure you check it out. For match day 31, you can play for the free chance of winning a holiday, a jersey, beats headphones. I keep doing that every ad. Beats headphones. <laughs> and gift cards for your PSN or Xbox. And once you download the app, you have to register. UK users need to use that ID or provide that ID once you have submitted your first pitch team, your winning team. And this app is only available to those who are in the UK and Ireland and are age 18 or over. Now, about this app, this app lets you build your own team. You collect points off a leaderboard, or you collect points off your friends, or you collect points against masterminds like myself, and your captain will earn you double points. You can also play for free. You don't have to use your money to win your fair share of £70,000. Now, that is one huge injection. <laughs> injection! 
there's also weekly competitions every week. This isn't just based of one full season. Now, like I said previously, the best thing for me about this app has to be the fact that you can see all the stats within the app. You don't have to leave the app to check out the key passes, the assists, the goals, all of that stuff. It is going to be in the app. You don't have to leave it. If you need help, it's going to be in the app. Everything is in the app. <laughs> So make sure you go and download the app. The link that you need will be in the description below. Download it, have fun, gamble aware. I will see you on Spitch, but for now, let's carry on with our Xavi 433. So welcome back, people. As you can see, we are already lined up in a 433. So what we're going to do, we're going to sort out the team instructions first, then the player roles and their instructions. Play that game. It's a Champions League final, actually. It is a Champions League final against Liverpool which is going to be interesting. That's going to be tasty. And as you can see, we've already won the league. We played 38, we won 33. We've drawn four. We've only lost one game so far, which was annoyingly against Getafe. We lost one nil away. We could have completed the season unbeaten, but let's go back to the tactic. We will look at the results a little later. So let's start off with those team instructions. For the mentality, of course, we're going to go with that positive mentality. Be a little bit cautious with the ball. Not exactly cautious, but we're not going to be all guns blazing, getting players further forward forward we're just gonna knock the ball about patiently and waiting for that opening so we're gonna go with a positive mentality we are of course going to play out from the defense that's gonna be key to this shabby tactic the passing directness is slightly shorter or just on shorter but the tempo is on higher because Barcelona do actually play with quite a high tempo they do like to get the ball back to front not exactly again in the quickest of fashions but they do like to play with a slightly quicker tempo especially than their opponents so for the approach play we are going to be playing out from the defense we do have a shorter passing directness and the tempo is set to higher and in the final third we are going to be sending in low crosses try and get those pullbacks and by doing so to try and help us we are going to work the ball into the box and that pretty much wraps up in possession for this Xavi tactic. Passing directness on short are the tempo and higher. We are going to play out from the back. Again, we are going to be a possession-based tactic. In the final third, low crosses to try and get those pullbacks. And to help us with that, we are going to work the ball into the box. Now, Champions League nights, they are a little different. When we are playing in the Champions League for some odd reason, just using this didn't work. We didn't play extremely well in the Champions League, but to help us with our our performances in the Champions League we added overlap on the left and overlap on the right actually as well and for the tempo we set that to extremely high so when we are playing in the Champions League you will have the added tactic in the download link as well the tempo now is on extremely high and we do have overlap both on the left and overlap on the right next for transition Barcelona do like to press they like to press high they like to press heavy and they like to press well with a man mark so for the transition when the possession has been lost we will counter press to try and put pressure on the opponents and win that ball right away but when the possession has been won we've left that blank we don't have an instruction we're not going to counter press and we're not going to hold the shape we're just going to kind of really just let the players make that decision so when the possession has been won we do not have an instruction when the goalkeeper is in possession of the ball he will be distributing the ball to the fullbacks, the centre backs, and he will be taking short kicks as well. I mean, we could have tried to get that theory that he would knock the ball directly into Aubameyang, let him drop, so we can release that third man. But of course, in Football Manager, trying to replicate everything in real life is extremely difficult. So we've opted for short kicks, distribute to the fullbacks and centre backs occasionally or by chance. He will kick it long and hopefully Uber can win the pool. Now, lastly, for out of possession, and like we've already discovered, he likes to press really intensely. So we're going to have a much higher line of engagement. The defensive line is going to be set to higher. The defensive width, we're going to force the opponents on the outside. So that's going to be our defensive trap. We're going to use the offside trap, the trigger press, which is going to whack that all the way up and prevent the short goalkeeper distribution. Now, to get that man marking, that man orientation press, we are also going to be using that tighter marking. And that pretty much wraps up the team instructions for this shabby tactic, the 4 3, 3. So for out of possession, the much higher line of engagement, a higher defensive line, force the opponents on the outside for our offensive trap, our defensive trap even. We are also going to be using the offside trap. The trigger press is set to much more often prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and use tight marking. Now we can move over to the player roles. 
So now for the player roles, it's kind of a mixture from what I see from Xavi generally, but also from the last game against Real Madrid when they smashed Real Madrid four goals to the nil. That is when actually I got most of this Xavi request. So some of the player roles are determined from what I saw in that Real Madrid game, but also from what I see just generally when watching Barcelona in recent days or recent weeks even. So in goal, we are going to start out with a sweeper keeper on the defensive duty, Ter Stegen. Should we just whack Ter Stegen in there as well? Let's just whack Ter Stegen in there. In defence, we are going to go with two ball playing defenders. This should help us to build up from the back pretty nicely. Both of the players can dribble with the ball, bring it forward, progress with the ball, but also play those key passes into midfield as well. So we've gone with two ball playing defenders and we also going to ask them to stay wider to stretch the pitch especially when we're building out from the back we want to create width so the full backs are going to stretch out wide but also the center backs as well they're going to break out wide they're going to go with ease off tackles as well because someone actually pointed out to me before in one of my previous tactics the center backs give away a lot of fouls so we've just gone with ease off tackles for that reason alone and of course shorter passing as well but to get shorter passing on your center back what you have to do is go to passing directness put it to slightly more direct Rec, go back to your ball playing defender and now you can ask him to pass it sure so for the center back those are the player instructions we've got ball playing defender on the fan pass it short stay out wide and ease of tackles now i've got to put it back to short to pass it now for the full backs what i've gone with is a danny alves role and i've also gone with a jordi alba role as well so for jordi alba we're going to use a full back on attack not a wing back but a full back on attack because at times we do want that three at the back and a full back usually or tends to defend with the defensive line whereas the full back i notice anyway they tend to defend a little higher up so just in case the box to box midfielder or the left side of central midfielder can't get back to cover the full back in case that scenario doesn't happen we do want that back three to always be an option because that's what happens in real life so we've gone for a fullback on a tack and to help us with that back three to get that on occasions we are going to ask him to sit more narrow but we're also going to ask him to cross from the byline because he is going to cross more often but we don't necessarily want him to be crossing from a deeper area we want him to get to the byline pull it back and that can help us create some good chances so for the Jordi Alba role we've gone for the fullback on a tack and for the Danny Alves role we are going to be using an inverted wing back on support now i know danny alvarez didn't start against real madrid so of course this isn't from that Real Madrid game. So for the back four, the full back on attack as the left back, two ball playing defenders in the middle. And for that Danny Alves role, we do have an inverted wing back on the right. Now to make my life easy, I'm just gonna whack in the players again. So for right back or left back even, we've put Jordi Alba, Danny Alves in there. We're gonna put Gerard Piquet and Aru. I always struggle to pronounce his name. Arujo, 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 Arujo. Help me in the comments. <laughs> so that there is the role Sergi Bisquets we're gonna just whack him in defensive midfield of course we are and for his role there is a couple roles that we could have used we could have used a deep line playmaker but intriguingly intriguingly Sergio Bisquets actually has the license to get further forward so he doesn't necessarily hold his shape in front of that back four he does have the license to both get further forward to help the midfield and create but also to press he has to get further forward to press and put pressure on the midfield the opponent's midfield for that man-to-man -man marking so in order to help us with that we've gone for the defensive midfielder on support rather than deep line playmaker because like we said he holds his position and that's not necessarily what we want so defensive midfielder on support is what i found perfect for sergio bisquets and for his player instructions well i kind of want him just to keep the game ticking i don't necessarily want him to be playing these extravagant hollywood passes i just want him to keep the game ticking controlling the tempo for us so we're actually going to be using take fewer risk and shorter passing but again you have to go to your passing directness increase that go back to your player now you can ask him to play it shorter so for Sergio Bisquets or Bisquets Bisquets again another name that I struggle to pronounce we are going to ask him to pass it shorter and take fewer risk now we move into midfield now in midfield is where we want things to happen we also want to create and we want a lot of player movements we want some not necessarily roaming around but we do want players to be moving 
and causing havoc for the opponent's defenders. Also, what you see at Barcelona as well is that all five vertical channels are covered. So you would have the left winger out on the left. You will have the left side of central midfielder advance and play in the left half space. The same for the right midfielder as well or the right side of central midfielder. He will be operating in that right half space. Then you have your right winger and then you have your center forward making all five vertical channels covered so that is what we also want to be focused on that's what we want to keep our eye on so in midfield for the player roles what i went with for the left side of central midfield i went with the box to box midfielder the box to box midfielder is slightly attacking he likes to roam around from his position and this helps with some nice interchanging this also helps with some nice positional play as well but we've asked him to stay wider so he kind of hangs around in that half space but we've also asked him to take more risk as well so the box to box midfielder is going to be staying wide taking more risk while his central midfield partner is now a central midfielder on attack who has the license to break further forward and get in the box but also help create those third man runs we want to try and get those third man runs and of course uber needs players around him and players making runs off him in order to create that movement so the central midfielder similar to the box to box midfielder we've asked him to take more risk but instead of asking him to stay wider we have asked him to move into those channels so the central midfielder on attack not necessarily a glamorous role not necessarily a role that everybody would go to when creating a Barcelona tactic but it's what we've gone for and for me it makes sense a central midfielder on attack take more risk and move into channels now we're moving up into that attack line for the right winger we're going to be using him on a winger on attack he's going to be or the main idea for him is to stretch the pitch the inverted winger the inverted wing back is not going to do so and we always always need somebody stretching the pitch and this of course helps when Chayore is playing as well we are going to get the best out of try your way or even Dembele so the right winger is very very important to the system he doesn't have any added instruction and for the left winger we've gone for something a little bit different we've gone for the inside forward on support a forward making runs again off Obama Yang if he chooses to drop deep and collect the ball or just another player to help us with the goal scoring but he's also of course going to be an extremely creative player by dribbling more cutting inside taking more risk as well but for the inside forward we've asked him to stay wider just so again we can maintain width we can stretch the pitch and of course stretch our opponent's defense so the left winger is the inside forward lastly up top we've gone for the advanced forward for that Pierre Emerick Aubameyang role and that there wraps up the tactic the striker has no instructions so yeah that there wraps up the tactic Xavi's 4-3-3 and again like I said there is a Champions League version the only difference or the only tweak is the tempo now we've set that to extremely high and we've also added overlap on the left and overlap on the right yes the inverted wing back will be overlapping which does also make complete sense because if you read the role i don't necessarily want to get into it too much but if you read the role he still will act as a fullback from time to time so the fullback or the inverted wing back overlapping still does make sense and is not necessarily counterproductive that there wraps up the tactic now it's time to move over to the next stage of playing that champions league final and seeing how this tactic plays out So this here is the team that we're going to go with in the Champions League final and of course we have opted for that Champions League version as well but let's get stuck in to this Champions League final. Team talk all wrapped up, let's get stuck in. I mean it looks like, it looks like there's going to be a highlight right away. Liverpool have given the ball away to Menguiza, Ronald Arujo, Pedri, Menguiza. Okay, let's not lose the ball in a dangerous area. Well done. Anti Fatty trying to take on Robertson. Os Gomez doesn't succeed. Firmino, Salah. Here's Mane. Oh, what a save. Come on, boys. It gets too easy, man. And Firmino heads the ball again. Too easy. Come on, boys. There's Alison Becker, Joao Matip, Fabinho, Virgil. Okay, Thiago, Mane. Oh, my God. 
it's just too easy, man. We have to do something about this. We have to do something about this. It's just too easy. The way that's just playing through us, we weren't even going to prevent the shortkeeper distribution. It looks like we've killed off the Liverpool chances, but we aren't creating any of ourselves. Stroke of half time now. Let's not concede right now, man. Let's not concede right now. And of course, we're going to concede right now because the game will just obviously do that. Ah. Uh... People with very high passing attributes just all of a sudden can't make the most simplest passes. His Ansu Fatty, that's a lovely ball. Penalty ref, surely. Surely, ref. Is he giving it? Ivan, has Ivan given the penalty? The VAR are checking it. And penalty has been awarded. Hopefully we bury this. Ronald Rio? What a pen. What a pen. But why is he taking it? It's his seventh goal of the season. We aren't complaining. We aren't complaining. But in truth, I was thinking, why the hell is he taking a pen? Gomez Firmino. By being on Thiago. It's just too easy. I know Liverpool are great, but Jesus Christ, man. Salah Gomez. Oh, what happened? Let's just cut the highlight. It's Jordi Alba. Well done, boys. Eric Garcia. Now. Oh, what? Like, I don't understand that. Memphis Depay. Well done, boy. Then Bele. Jordi Alba. Plays it through to Pedro. You're through. Oh, yeah, he's offside. Depay? It was Pedri. Eric Garcia. To Stegen. To Ronald Aruja. Menguiza, Pedri, Sergio. Nice. Anti Fatty. Nice. Memphis. Oh, my God. Oh, they're going to score, aren't they? Back post, Mane. Back post, Mane. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys, I literally told you guys, man. Oh, that was the most obvious thing to happen. How can I predict that to happen, man? That is ridiculous. It's not offside. Oh, disallowed. Menguiza, Ronald Arujo, Ansu Fati. Ter Stegen, they play it back. Eric Garcia now. We're trying to invite Liverpool, but Liverpool aren't exactly coming out. Frankie de Jong, play it to the left back. Now stretch the play. There we go. There we go. And now we can find him. There we go. Frankie de Jong. Okay, let's not lose this. This is nice possession. We're holding the ball nicely, avoiding a press. And there's Ansu Fati. Come on. You're free. Oh! No. No, no ref, no ref, don't do that, that was football, no ref, no, goal awarded, come on, instant reply. Oh, instant reply. Yes, Ansu Fati, come on. Menguiza, Liverpool are on the ropes. Frankie Dion, Memphis, Pedro, you're through. You're through. <laughs> Liverpool are on the ropes. Come on, we've got to bury it. Because Salah, you don't give Salah a, uh, you don't give Salah a chance. You don't give Mane or Bobby a chance. Oh. Frankie Dion. We're not going to win that. Come on. But then Bennett picks up. We're on it now. We're on it. Like Memphis, you're off. Uh, if we don't score these chances, man. Come on, boys. Come on. Champions. Champions. Ole, ole, ole. Champion. Come on. I, I was sweating my forehead. Sweating, hands sweating. <laughs> Liverpool had us on the ropes. I'm not exactly sure what happened in the second half. 
not exactly show. Not exactly sure what happened in the second half. But Jesus. We had them on the rope. Sergio Biscuits didn't have a good game. Neither did Eric Garcia, who was playing in um, place of Gerard PK. Frankie De Jong also had an average game, but we won the game. We deserve to. I mean, the second half, the way the second half panned out. Can we see the stats? The way the second half panned out, I believe we might have just edged that. We might have just edged that in terms of deserving to win. So let's go to that game. I mean, yeah, look, we had the better chances. Of course, down to the penalty as well. Thiago scoring. Trent had an awful game. But it's Barcelona 2, Liverpool 1. We also had more of the ball, which is, of course, very nice to see. So that there is the game. That's how the tactic plays out. Now let's get stuck into the results. So for the results, as you guys saw, we beat Liverpool in the final, the Champions League final 2-1. I mean, we deserve to win that game in the Spanish first division. We were the champions. We played 38. We won 33. We drew four. We lost one. That one was a 1-0 defeat away to Getafe. In the Spanish Cup, we won that and we also won the Super Cup. So we won four trophies, four glorious trophies trophies so we can look at some of the stats in a little bit more detail we scored the most goals we had the most shots for fewer shots against barcelona so we defended fairly well for the pass completion ratio i would have liked this to be a little bit better but 91 percent i mean that is not bad at all that places us seventh and for the average possession which is one percent away from the top which is Celta vigo on 57 but on 56 for the most tackles one we aren't in the top eight most dribbles made again not in the top eight but for the most clean sheets we had 25 clean sheets out clean sheet in atletico madrid out clean sheet in <laughs> and for the viewers conceded again 15 out conceding now okay that don't make sense against atletico now let's look at the player stats memphis to pay with the most goals 27 ferran torres scoring 18 most assists ferran torres he had an extremely good season with 13 assists maxi gomez with the most shots for but he's a valencia player memphis to pay in that list in second place he, he also has the most man of the match awards with ferran torres in fourth place for the most key passes nobody in a top eight pass completion nobody there most tackles nobody there but for the dribbles made ferran torres again extremely good season as the right winger with 112 dribbles most clean sheets to stay again and for the viewers conceded to stay again comes in second with 14 looking at the data hub this is our formation against liverpool the most recent game i will whip up now i would whip up now the average positions of real life in barcelona now for the attacking efficiency we were aggressive and clinical for the defensive efficiency we were quiet and impenetrable for the passing we made a lot of passes they were also accurate and for the possession we frequently won the ball we were also reliable movement we made a lot of dribbles we were reliable with those as well for the tackling we made fewer tackles we didn't make we didn't need to make a lot of tackles because we was mostly on the ball but our tackling was very very strong and for the xg table i mean this is probably one of the only times we underperformed the xg the xg is on 94.1 we scored 94 goals the expected points is 86.8 .8, but the actual points is 103 and we were expected to top the league which we did and we scored or averaged an xg per match of 2.3 so now let's look at the squad stats memphis to pay with 44 goals and 52 starts ferran torres 20 goals in all competitions ansu fight with 16 pedri with 12 gerard pico with 11 set piece routine and pierre Aubameyang with pierre emmerich Aubameyang with 10. Ferran Torres with 21 assists in all competitions. Frankie De Jong with 14. Pedro with 13. And Jordi Alba with 12. But unfortunately, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and share it. Leave a comment. I can't think of anything else. Also, I'm streaming on Twitch. Make sure you join me on Twitch as well. The link to that will be in the description. Shout out to my Patreons. I appreciate you guys. But for now, that is it. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. Peace out.